Programming for lots of us is a lot like magic. So we use particular commands in a certain order in an arcane language and we can make things happen on the other side of the planet. But only a few of us have this talent at the moment. It's getting bigger. We're starting to teach kids how to do it in schools. The curriculum in this country and now other countries is mandated. Children as young as six are learning how to program or at least learning programming concepts in schools. And this is amazing. But the one thing that Hogwarts teaches that we don't is defense against the dark arts. Hogwarts gets it. They realize that there are going to be people out there who can do what you do and they're going to use their power for personal gain. And so they teach defense against the dark arts to their wizards in order to protect them from these hooded villains that come around. We don't do that. <laughs> this quote is amazing. I think this is one of the best quotes that I can think of for hacking because it talks about Death Eaters, the bad wizards in Harry Potter, and it's so apt when it comes to today. You might have heard on the news this morning that one of the biggest internet crashes in history happened on Friday. I'll talk about that in a minute. The word hacker is actually about 60 years old. So it was invented in the 40s by a bunch of geeks at MIT. Uh, the joke was that it was someone who makes furniture with an axe, using something you're not supposed to in order to achieve a goal because you have nothing else you wish to use. And so you can see there are eight definitions of hacker in the jargon file which has been around on the internet ever since it's existed. Uh, this is a geek speak dictionary. It's filled with jargon terms, things that we use every day. Uh, and there are eight definitions of hacker. You'll notice that the only one that is negative is the last one. And that's the only one we seem to hear about in the media. My favorite is number seven. You could apply that particular phrase to a number of people throughout history. Newton, Galileo, Marie Curie, Ada Lovelace. These people wanted to overcome limitations that they found. So they reached around, they found the tools they had to hand, they cobbled something new together, they innovated, made something better and solved their problem. That's what hackers do. That's the power that they have. The media would have you think that, that hackers are all hoodie techno villains that do digital voodoo to you down the phone line at 3 a.m. from some darkened room, twisting their moustaches, laughing maniacally, slamming ripple. It's not the case. If you Google the word hacker in an image search, it's hilarious. What you get is a cartoon. It's a person, again, black hoodie, balaclava, green ones and zeros, because you know the terminal windows on all computers are in that monochrome green still, because it's like the seven. <laughs> but this is a message we're being fed all the time about hacking. And this is the problem. It's the root of the problem. We're still using a system that's referred to in the community as security through obscurity. The idea that if we don't talk about security issues, then people won't know them and they're not going to breach security. That's a little backwards. Because the people who are interested are going to jump on this idea, the curious people, the hackers, the guys who have the curiosity they need to satisfy, and they're going to find ways through your system. If you haven't given them a context of ethics with which to use their powers, you're going to find a lot of villains popping up. Code.org, which is one of the best movements in the world for getting kids to code. They started the Hour of Code, they have a free website. If you want to learn to program, get on code.org. He says that any time we teach anything at school, we teach ethics with it. You teach chemistry, you expect that the kids you're teaching chemistry to are not going to go home and blow up the shit. You teach karate. Every time your sensei teaches you how to do something, he instills the lesson in you that this is not so you can go out and punch randoms in the street. <laughs> I'm teaching you this skill so that when somebody else comes along who has a similar skill or a greater skill, you will not be helpless. That ethics is slammed into people who have taught these things over and over again. We're not even mentioning information security in schools. It's not on the curriculum. And yet we're seeing our internet crashing on a daily basis now because there are people out there with the skills who lack the ethics. Some interesting people with amazing technical skill who lacked ethics. Oppenheimer invented the nuclear bomb. And his quote then, that is what he said after they tested the bomb. He was mortified at what they turned his work into. Walter White, have you ever seen Breaking Bad? Amazing chemist, became the world's greatest meth dealer. I still hold that the moral of Breaking Bad is pay teachers better, by the way. <laughs> um, but no one, with these guys, no one sat them down and asked them the big important questions. 
So we're seeing people jump out there who have this skill, who are able to take down things like the Federal Reserve, people who are able to hack your system and use it as a weapon, people who are able to take your information and sell it on or get into your computer and lock it down and then sell your information back to you because of the ignorance in society, because of the fact we're not teaching other people how to do this, how to protect themselves at a very basic level. The government has an interesting agenda when it comes to information security. When you consider that Miko Hippinen, one of the world's greatest hacker hunters, says in one of his TED talks, the internet is on fire, go and see it, because the internet is definitely on fire. Make your way to the exits now. Um, he says in his TED talk that if we're not educating people about what's happening, the ignorance is a weapon that people can use against us. The government has been perpetrating hacks on us for the last 15 years. The news reported this week that GCHQ has been spying on all of you for the last 15 years, completely illegally. Do you think it might be a funny crossover somewhere that they don't want us to be able to protect ourselves from it? That they don't want us to know when they're doing it? That they want to keep that knowledge to themselves like the shaman and the priests of old used to do when they used to ask for human sacrifices to keep the gods happy? All that sort of stuff. If you only have one gatekeeper to information, that gatekeeper holds all the power. We need to give the power back to the people. Because at the moment, most of the stuff online that's happening, something about 70% of malicious activity online, according to F-Secure, is perpetrated by state actors on their own people. This came from the Home Office. This made me so angry when I read it. I lost my marbles. Basically, it says, anybody who's learned IT skills from a professional source is a threat. Anybody who's taught themselves IT skills is also a threat. And any kid who decides that they like to modify games and share things online is a threat. So theoretically, we're all threats to the government. And the Home Office put out this document to tell police and local authorities to watch out for people with these skills because they're threats. They're possible terrorists or criminals. Packs off on the back terrorists. It's ridiculous. Every single one of these jobs contains skills, access, equipment that would allow them to commit serious offences. We've seen recently the lengths and breadths of the damage that some of these people can do. <laughs> Bankers. <laughs> when we offer them too much trust. Okay. Soldiers. They definitely have skills to commit serious offences. It doesn't get much more serious than murder. But we trust these people because we know that they've been taught, mostly, with ethics as part of the context of their knowledge. They're not just self-taught soldiers. They don't go home by a gun, teach themselves how to kill people, and then decide they want to go and fight for the government. We train them for years, and we give them ethics and context in which to use your skills. We're not doing this with hacking. This is why there are so many villains on the internet. People who are self-taught from Reddit, 4chan, hacker forums, who go out and learn these programming languages, have this innate curiosity that schools want their children to have, we want our students to sate their curiosity. But not like this. There was a case a few years ago in Ohio. A minor, a young girl, went to a football party with a football team, drank too much, and several of the football players raped her at this party. They took photos, they took video, they made online jokes and shared it among themselves. And then their school covered it up. Derek Lostada allegedly hacked into the school website, released the information, exposed the cover-up, and is now facing jail. The two rapists got one and two years each for rape. The guy who exposed the cover-up is facing 16 years in prison if they convict him of hacking the website. If that isn't breeding fear, I don't know what is. That is a dangerous precedent to set, to say that we're going to punish people who break into computers worse than we're going to punish rapists. Does anybody else find that sickening? <coughs> Miko is one of my heroes. This guy's been on the internet ever since it's existed. He's got a quarter century of experience in shutting down the baddest guys on the web. 
and he tells you that any smart device in your house is exploitable. If you have something connected to the internet in your house, then a hacker can take control of it. And that goes for your phone, that goes for your webcam, that goes for your smart TV that records everything you say all the time. Go check that out. You may have heard about that big hack that happened yesterday. It's not the first time that piece of software was used on the internet. About a month ago, a guy called Dean Krebs, internet security journalist, big bad wolf on the internet, shuts down hackers all the time, exposes things like that. His website was knocked down by a piece of software called Mirai that a hacker wrote. This piece of software played on the ignorance of every user in the world. We don't teach biology or chemistry to kids because they're going to become surgeons or chemists. We teach them about photosynthesis and that water is made of hydrogen and oxygen, or how light bulbs work, just to understand the world you live in. It's great we're teaching coding now because that's the world we live in. Everything is digital. Think about how many times you used something digital today. Did you buy train tickets? Did you use your Oyster card? Have you messaged anybody on the phone, sent an email, checked out a web page, looked at Reddit, jumped on Facebook? That's the world you live in, it's all ones and zeros. We need kids to understand this fundamental infrastructure of the world and there's a huge part of it that we're not discussing. The tech food part, the dangerous part. You wouldn't send a kid out to drive a car on the freeway without having given him the safety procedures, wear your seatbelt, make sure you check your mirrors. We're sending kids on the internet 24 hours a day. If you have a kid and that kid has a phone and that phone is charged in his bedroom at night, 24 hours a day he is connected to everybody else on the internet. Everybody else. And you don't know if they're good guys or bad guys or somewhere in between. So how do we teach these kids to protect themselves and us, hopefully? Bruce Lee's got some words of wisdom. We can't just talk about it, we have to show them how to do it. If you're just thinking about it, if you're just philosophizing about security, you're not knowing how to work it. You're not understanding it. Nobody reads a karate book and can beat him up. He spent years and years practicing, doing the things, getting out there, making it work. So we have a context of ethics. We have five basic rules in the class. My favorite is the last one, go find out. I don't accept, I don't know is swearing in my classroom because Google exists. We have the entire repository of human knowledge at our fingertips 24 hours a day. If you're not asking the questions you don't know the answers to, get out. The Mirai bot, which is the software that took down the internet yesterday, we don't know who ran it. A few weeks ago, the person who wrote it gave out the source code to everybody for free. When Krebs was attacked, he was attacked with what's known as a DDoS attack, distributed denial of service. It's where you take a whole bunch of other computers and you bombard one computer in order to shut it down. They use 380,000 Internet of Things devices from around the world. We haven't seen a global botnet like this for a very, very long time. This piece of software that Hacker wrote, what it does is it goes out, it checks if you have one of these pieces of equipment, and this is only a very small section of the database that it uses. So you can see out there, it says manufacturer in the middle column, and on the left it has username and password. If, you're, if you have a device that's on this list, it's very likely that somebody has pwned it by now. Because all this piece of software does is it tries everything on the internet, it will say, okay, so you're running one of these NACD IP cameras, let's check if you've changed the root password. How many of you guys here have changed the default password on your router at home? Or have you just left it as admin or change me? So that's kind of like leaving the keys into the front door of your house and hoping that nobody comes in. Because this botnet is probably already in. All it did was go and try the default password. If it didn't work, try it on, because there'd be a million other suckers that haven't changed the password either. They built a botnet and they attacked Krebs with 620 gigabits per second of information. For those lay people, that's like opening 20,000 YouTube videos at full high def at once. That was the first day. The third day, they attack somebody different with twice the power. It's exponential. If you haven't changed your password, then your system is a weapon that they can use against someone else. This is the cost of your ignorance. And nobody's told you to do that. Nobody sat you down, you got your router, there's a little tiny bit in the bottom of the conditions that says change your password, but that's it. There's no education on it. 
Yesterday's internet attack, they used 10% of the power available to the Mirai botnet, just one tenth of the power they could have used. They took down so much of the internet. Twitter, Reddit, Netflix, Facebook, all these sort of places, completely shut down. Nobody could get to them because they used 10% of the power, but they changed the attack. Just like my first quote, Severus Snape, many-headed, ever-changing. First attack, they found out how to stop us there. Let's mutate it a little bit, attack something different, and see how much more damage we can do. We need to start breeding superheroes. We need to start giving kids an ethical context, giving them these amazing skills, this incredibly powerful knowledge, and sending them out to do good in the world. Not continuing to allow people to teach themselves in darkened rooms at home and have no idea of what they're actually doing. Part of me is telling you that that mirror attack that happened yesterday, some 15-year-old kid in his bedroom who stumbled across a piece of software, doesn't know what it does, threw it out on the internet and wreaked havoc. Troy Hunt, the CEO of HaveIBeenPwned.com, says that most of the people that come to him with information that they have stolen didn't know what they were doing when they did it. They're what we refer to as script keys. Took a piece of software, ran it, it did something amazing, something complete, completely illegal, and now they're finding themselves holding the bag when the FBI come knocking, because nobody told them what they were doing. No one explained the consequences of their actions. There's a three-pronged approach to breeding more digital superheroes. The government needs to chill out a bit. They need to relinquish their power and let citizens do their own work. We can't continue to have security through obscurity. Trying to hide it from people is clearly not working. Half the internet fell over yesterday. Teachers need to demand more resources to teach this stuff. The government put three, or computing at school, sorry, put three million pounds into teaching coding in England. That works out to about 150 quid per school. That's one training session for a teacher and two Raspberry Pis. <laughs> not quite enough. Industry, guys like Google, Amazon, need to start assuming the mantle of improving security because it's your ignorance that is costing them millions every day. All of those websites that fell over yesterday, that would have cost them a lot. And that's because we didn't change our default password. <laughs> if they told us that, maybe it wouldn't have happened. Maybe Mirai wouldn't be as powerful as it is. They're getting sued over their EULAs. They need to make your EULA the license agreement that nobody reads and everybody just ticks OK because I want the service. They're being told they need to make them more user friendly so you understand what it is you're signing away. Uh, F-Secure, Finnish company, did a really great experiment with some free Wi-Fi in London. One of their conditions for the EULA was your firstborn child. <laughs> Everybody said yes. <laughs> so we're breeding as digital citizens. The next generation of them are coming up right now. I'm teaching them. You're seeing them. They're your kids, your friends, the kids you bump into on the tube. What are we teaching them? What context are we giving them? For living in this digital society where you can reach out across the world and slam people without having to think about it. These guys are hardcore death eaters, some of these people. They can throw magic around the world at a second's notice. Who's going to come along and stop them? Who's going to get there first? The kids we're teaching now. We need to teach them properly. You can't leave it to Stan Lee to impart the wisdom of the ages to our kids. All right? I love Spider-Man, but I think we should be telling them this, not him. Because with great power comes great responsibility. And we need to impart that to the kids of today. Thanks.